Welcome back to another episode of Competitive History. This time, we're going to pull out all the stops for what is, and always has been, my favourite fighting game character of all time, if the name didn't give that away in the first place, I guess. Sektor is the character that has personally shaped my taste in mechanics, design and visuals, and across the many MK titles that he's featured in, he's been all over the place in the competitive tier list, from top to bottom to stuck in the middle, he's been there, done that. A bonus for this episode is that I recently collaborated with my very good friend History Behind the Warrior for a lore history of Sector, which is on his channel, and it's live already. If you haven't already seen that, make sure that you check it out too. These two videos combined really kind of put the lore and the story and his competitive meta across all the different games into one complete package. This is our week of Sector, and this is a complete competitive history of the Red Cyborg himself. Now before this video begins, I do actually have a very special shout out to give. If you like Mortal Kombat and in-game exclusive content, stick around for it, because Mustard and myself have been fortunate enough to be partnering up with Beyond NRG, which is a gaming energy supplement from the UK. The drink is packed full of vitamins, minerals and nootropics, with five flavours in total. But the reason that we're talking to you about it now is that Beyond Energy have partnered up with Mortal Kombat as well for some exclusive flavours. They are two flavours, the Wild Forest Fruits and the Blue Raspberry Lemonade. They are Scorpion and Sub-Zero themed, and the reason that is the case is that with either of these two flavours that you purchase, you will get either Sub-Zero's Avalanche skin attached, or Scorpion's Gold Demon skin. They are two very difficult skins to get normally, as I'm sure you're aware, but by purchasing one of these two flavours, the skin comes with the package. It's not just that though. If you're in the UK, there is a competition to win both an Xbox Series X and a copy of MK11 Ultimate on the Xbox Series X as a grand prize. Worth noting, these codes are for the Xbox version, and I know there are plenty of Xbox players that like our channel, so I think if you like Xbox and you like Mortal Kombat, it makes sense to give Beyond Energy a bit of a look, doesn't it? Now, if you use the code KM10 on the website, you will get a discount on your purchase. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you to Beyond Energy for supporting the channel, and hopefully you can get some cool MK content. On to the video. Sector's first ever appearance would be Vanilla Mortal Kombat 3. Now, there's definitely a strong case for the cyborgs to have deep seeds within specific people in the fanbase if you started with Mortal Kombat 3, right? Because they were pretty much the ninjas of this game. The cyborgs outnumbered human ninjas until Ultima MK3 a little bit later. So we'll cover Sector in Ultima as he is pretty much the same in both games and Ultima is definitely the one that is more commonly remembered. He brought weaponry to the fight in Mortal Kombat 3. The straight missile is a simple input and it functions as a simple projectile. Another simple input belongs to the teleport, which is a full combo launcher that can be done on the ground or in the air. This is pretty important to his game plan because it does have that kind of jump in teleport mix up which can definitely catch people off guard. The final special move here is the smart missile, which tracks the opponent. I'll explain the game plan of these a little bit later, but the fact is, his inputs are some of the easiest in the entire game, which is why I think I liked him so much as a kid. I could actually do his moves, and they weren't very complicated. Combo strings are an area that you fall short as Sector, as he hasn't got much of them, and they're not that great on their own. He has this 3-hit launcher, which doesn't do terrible damage if you do combos afterwards and it can set up into Smart Missile. This 5-hit, which can be a nice little punish in a pinch, and most notably, this 2-hit kick string. This is your kick combo as Sector, and if you know the meta of run jabs, pressure, and having a good kickstarter to essentially crush their defense, 2 hits is simply not enough. It was definitely a major tool that Sector lacked. Competitive game plan did let Sector stand out to me, as he's one of the few characters that can actually work projectiles into a major part of his game plan. Elements of zoning that we would go on to see many games later. You could really machine gun smart missile and straight missile, and if you didn't know the solutions to the matchup, he can even look kind of broken. The issue is, you could nullify the smart missile easily if you know what moves gave you the invincibility and just making the explosion miss. Certain combo strings, specials, low pokes and more meant that in tons of matchups, the trade of the smart missile versus them essentially taking the hit and then punishing you was never in your favour. 
Additionally to this, and it's definitely a weird one, Arcade Ultimate MK3 has a bug where Player 2 Sector can't have two missiles on the screen at once. If the smart missile is out, straight missile won't work until the smart missile has exploded. It's a massive hit to his missile-based game plan, which is kind of Sector's entire point in this game, but Player 1 didn't have this issue, making Sector on the player 2 side, a worse version of the character because you can't work missiles into your meta at all. Crazy, I know, but hey look, it's arcade and sometimes these things are the way they are. Now, although a lot of community ROM hacks and very famous versions of Ultimate MK3 that are used in tournaments, they do fix the missile problem for Sector, at the highest level he is still sitting comfortably in the bottom 3 area of the tier list. The tools he had simply didn't allow him to hang with the top tiers, and things like his laughably low damage from the Kickstarter, his extremely punishable teleport for minimal reward, the counterplay to his homing missile, nothing really was working out for him in this game at all, and he was, unfortunately, one of the least threatening on the roster. The tragic fact is that Robot Smoke was a better sector at high level play. The same teleport, but more reward, a better projectile, as it was fast and it stunned for a combo, he had more damaging strings, more damage off of his kick string, which is basically sectors but better, an air grab for better damage still, and he had extra layers of gameplay thanks to the existence of an invisibility. Sector had more projectiles, sure, but neither were as dangerous as what the harpoon smoke had gave you. I still remember being at East Coast Throwdown two years ago and having people essentially lining up to play me because nobody else they knew played Sector at high level. A 20 plus year old game and most people still don't know many people that played this character, just to put that into perspective. Mortal Kombat Trilogy is definitely important to cover here because Sector is a superior version of the character in this game because of a couple of things. The first and more obvious is a new move. It was common in Trilogy for a lot of characters to kind of get extra projectiles and Sector would be one of those characters in the form of a double straight missile. This move does crazy good damage for only a little bit extra recovery. It gives you bigger combos, better zoning, and it works into the smart missile game a lot more effectively. It is basically Sector, but with a much better missile game, so as you expect, he's automatically better than an Ultimate MK3. The second, and definitely more specific, but very important, is that the issue I mentioned where Sector can't have both Smart Missile and Straight Missile on the screen for Player 2, PlayStation 1 Trilogy actually has that on both sides, unfortunately, but N64 Trilogy fixes that issue, and you can in fact have both types on the screen at once, majorly increasing your ability to put missiles into your game plan, and being able to do double missile makes N64 Trilogy Sector the best version of classic 2D Sector without question. I say classic 2D Sector because there was definitely a great evil dwelling in the Dreamcast age with some of the cheapest gameplay you've ever seen in your life. Mortal Kombat 4, whilst it had an arcade version that definitely wasn't as popular as the previous titles, was more remembered for its console versions. The Sega Dreamcast would release basically an expansion of MK4 onto the system called Mortal Kombat Gold, which had a bunch of new characters. The most secret character of all was actually Sector, who was obtainable through the cheat menu and still required a sequence input in the character select to play as in the first place. What lied beneath this cheat sequence was, no joke, one of the most broken Mortal Kombat characters the franchise has ever released. A character that definitely screamed last minute addition and broke everything about the game with very little effort required. You'd have more than one release of MK Gold across the time period, with more modern versions of the disc nerfing Sector a little bit as they went on. He didn't have any new moves. The straight missile, double missile, and smart missile, and teleport, they were all still there. But they just completely annihilated the entire cast because of a few key reasons. Missile could be quite literally spammed out without thinking. The smart missile had a really long travel time, so you could do multiple of them in one go, making it impossible to actually punish you for doing it without getting hit yourself. The missile zoned you out all day, and you couldn't even approach him half the time. He was a total nightmare with zoning alone, and is one of the most dangerous keepaway characters in franchise's history. But that was just the start of things for this crazy character. 
In some versions, teleport would straight up infinite until max damage happens. Easy mode combos that you can just do until the game broke the combo for you. Anything into teleport launch, into knockdown and smart missile started the broken as hell zoning, and anything on block into double missile would be a pretty superb option on hit or block. And that's not even including his weapon, by the way, which was an actual gun! This gun was basically another projectile on top of his already god-tier projectiles. The guy just pulls this out and it's like... Yeah, this character was ban tier. As I said, different releases of gold would make some adjustments to the character, like a teleport limit, etc, etc. But he was always, and I mean always the absolute number one on the gold tier list. This character was comically broken. A playable appearance that most won't remember, or dare I say even know about, was his unique addition to Mortal Kombat Tournament Edition, which was a Game Boy Advance title. He was the reward for beating the tag mode on hard difficulty, and was by all means just a reskinned Cyrax visually. He even has the same fighting styles, and although he has his teleport punch and rocket, Sector has a much better Sambo stance, because he gets launchers and some combo strings that complement the teleport, whereas Cyrax doesn't get these. There's not much to cover here at all, I think, but I definitely saved myself a bunch of potential YouTube comments by mentioning that he was playable in this game. The game was really hard to get a hold of back in the day, and I think it only released in America or something, so it's understandable if you never heard from it or seen it. It is actually quite fun though, I will admit, for a game this old and on such a limited system. I always wanted to play this when I was a kid, but in the UK, seemed pretty impossible to get a hold of. Now, the proper 3D age was in full swing, with Deadly Alliance and Deception having their console releases at this time. Armageddon, as the final MK title to grace the PS2 era of systems, would include all characters yet to make their 3D appearance. Sector would make his Armageddon appearance because of this and his prominence in the story. His earlier design sporting what I always felt was actually the reskinned model they used for Tournament Edition or something. But when the game was out, Sector had new visuals and a brand new moveset. Although, fun fact, he could be seen in early E3 footage of Armageddon with one of Ermac's fighting styles, so who knows what kind of moves he could have had if he had that fighting style, right? Very interesting. Special moves are mostly here. Straight Missile and Teleport Uppercut both coming back, but Smart Missile is replaced by an Up Missile, something that we would see in the future as well. The final special move is Flame Burner, which is another move that would become staple, but it made its debut as a special in this game. Sector is a character mainly focused on his weapon stance, but the hand-to-hand -hand does have a couple of key normals and strings that you would use a fair amount. Standing 2 is a launcher that bags major damage. It is the main launcher that you'll go with across the entire character. His low pokes aren't all that bad, like down 1 or down 3 and down 4, but the main string that you'll use is 1-1 one, one stance change. It transitions into pulse blades, which is Sector's weapon, and on the ground it's good damage by itself, but in juggles it is a different world entirely. Sector's weapon is the main stance to use thanks to its range, tracking of moves, and access to basic mid or low options, and that is the basic mix-up of this game. Think of it as like a low overhead situation. Back 3 is a far-reaching low, back 1 is a launching mid. These two back-to-back -back are a simple mix-up tool. Sector does boast a fair few launches too, with his back 2 in weapon, hand-to-hand -hand has things like forward 3 and some other launches, just to name a few. He had a lot of combo options because of it, which brings me to weapon back 4. This move does really good damage, and it doesn't track too badly either. Throw on parry cancels on top to give it extra range, and it's not a bad poke to be honest. In juggles though, this attack is insane for damage output, because at the right heights, the back 4 and hand-to-hand 1-1 -hand stance change can both be used to continue juggles and you can end it in a weapon standing 3 string. Sector is a very heavy hitting character without having to use the often community banned air infinite loops because of his weapon back 4. Throw in those parry cancels into back 4 mid combo and you can get even more damage off any launch. Although this parry cancel is extremely tricky and in typical 3D MK fashion, sometimes it just doesn't work anyway. 
Sektor was very much a hit and run character in Weapon Stance, mostly, and you use his launching options to bag that giant damage output. Once they'd used all of their breakers, it's party time. But before then, parries into hand to hand standing too, or any kind of launch you can get your hands on, serves as a means for getting those breakers out of the opponent, because the breakers really stop you from getting the damage that you want. The damage was his biggest factor, in my opinion. His range wasn't too bad at all, thanks to weapon and specials, and his combos were both extremely fun and high damage. But in typical Armageddon fashion, he wasn't broken, and you had to be pretty broken to be top tier in this game. Sector was by all means solid as hell, but he still sat around the midsection of the tier list for a lot of people. He also just wasn't played a huge amount by the way, so information from him back in the day was impossible to come by, almost. But thankfully, we can play him today and definitely figure out what he's all about. This game is a special one for me, as it was where, competitively, Sektor definitely saw his first taste of mainstream competitive play. It is where my gamertag comes from in the first place, with Mortal Kombat 9 being my first proper dive into tournament play. Sektor is an extremely interesting character in this game, where his legacy of moves is perfectly pieced together to create a style of character that we hadn't seen before, whilst very much evolving the character mechanically to even further heights. So let's go over the moves first because they are, as you expect, crucial to his game plan. Straight Missile is a projectile that knocks down. This is important as he can take the lead in most projectile wars, getting his next option as they stand up. Enhanced Missile is a mid. Up Missile returns from Armageddon and it has three different distances to it. Enhanced will fire the Smart Missile, but important to note, it doesn't do any chip damage in this game, so not quite a round ender. Teleport launches once again, with the Enhanced granting another launch and more damage, crucial to Sektor's combo game. You can do this move in the air with a much faster startup, making the use of instant air teleport with Sektor a vital technique to master. His counter zoning becomes much better if you can do this every time. Flame Burner comes back and it restands on hit, with the enhanced version doing a little more damage, but honestly, you never really saw the enhanced version used. X-Ray is a neat projectile for Sektor with a cool little cinematic, but like MK9 in general, it's just not something that you would use much at all. Standing 1 is 6 frames, and it has a few strings attached to it that you would see often. 1-1 one, one back 1 comes from it and it sends full screen on hit. 1-2 one, back 1 is a full launcher, and because it starts off of a 6 frame jab, it is technically the fastest launcher in the entire game. 1-2-2 two, two ends in overhead, which is crucial for his mix-up game. Back 2-1, on top of being incredibly meaty, is big damage on its own, with back 2 comboing into teleport on the ground for giant combo damage. Use back 2-1 mid combo at the right heights to combo into a back 3, which is a low combo starter by the way, and get major combo payout. The back 3 is good for trip guarding someone after they've landed from a jump, and a meterless corner launcher, on top of being confirmable into teleport anyway, anywhere on screen. Up 3 is a leg lift stance that can go into either a low string or a single hit overhead. Back 1 is a safe on block and single hitting blast sending full screen, and forward 2 is an advancing button with a back 1 at the end that once more sends full screen. Now that is a lot of moves, but with all of it combined, here is the game plan. Sektor had incredibly strong neutral, thanks to things like back 1, forward 2, flame burner, missiles, instant air teleport reactions for counter zoning. Standing 1 was a fantastic anti air, on top of the sheer existence of a 6 frame launcher, which was great for interrupting pressure or punishing moves that are otherwise hard to punish with most other characters. Being able to set up missiles or smart missiles in pressure and going into a leg lift stance 50 50 is something that I personally used a lot later in the game's lifespan and was absolutely a missing piece of tech, in my opinion, back in the day. But there were some shortcomings to the character, and he faced them that you would mostly notice them in a real match quite often, to be honest. 1-2 back 1 is definitely a fast launcher, there's no downplaying that, but unless you're point blank, the 2 whiffs, and then the back 1 gets blocked. You tend to lose a lot of damage because the string often doesn't combo into itself unless you are right up close, making the punish game not as strong as it otherwise would have been, and it definitely hurt the character in certain matchups. 
Enhanced Teleport. It's safe on block and your only good wake up attack. Problem is, it's very easy to make whiff with low profiling buttons. Knowledgeable players would make your one bar wake up miss completely and punish you anyway. So in a high level, this wake up option tends to get completely nullified and you're just at the mercy of the incoming mix up. Sector's difficult matchups were often the most popular characters in the game. Cabal, Sonya, Cyrax, Johnny Cage, for instance, all gave Sector a pretty rough time, with Cage versus Sector in the corner pretty much being a GG right there. Sector was a really solid character, don't get me wrong, but the reason he's considered high mid in the tier list and not near the top is because his flaws in competitive were rather easy to exploit, and the top tiers gave him some real trouble. But when he's not against those characters, Sector really can thrive. So he's in a very strange place in MK9. He's great against a bunch of characters, but some of the most popular definitely give him a difficult experience. Sector's alternate costume was mechanically a little bit different, but not by much. Sector's main thing in the human skin was that 122 had a better hitbox, so some confirms worked for human, but not for robot. It's why human Sector, ironically, is technically better, because he has no new weaknesses, but extremely minor advantages. For Sector players, there were a fair few that I could safely say really pushed the character's limits in competitive tournaments. I'm not even going to plug my own gameplay here, you're free to check that out if you like, but I'm talking players like Nicholas from Greece, Ikizzle from the States, Swift Tom Hanks who liked human Sector, Gross for crying out loud who made his debut in competitive MK9 with a serious Sector showing in a grand finals. This character was extremely well represented all around the globe. So, look, I know this technically isn't Sector, but all the Sector players used it. It's got the name, the moves, the playstyle. I'm covering it here because it just makes sense. Triborg in Mortal Kombat XL had all four of the cyborgs as variations. The Sector variation absolutely ticking all of the boxes and has all the moves, making us feel right at home, speaking from absolute experience. MKX was a game that was full of patches, balance changes, and the like. If you want to know what the journey of Triborg was in that regard, I actually made a whole video on it a while ago, so I'll link that for you in the description and probably the pinned comment. For this video, I'm going with Final Patch Sector, who is definitely a top 5 character for a number of reasons. The classic moves are all here, so I really don't need to go over them for yet another time. You know them by now. Missiles, Flame Burner, Teleport, but a new move that he gets in MKX is an air dash that at certain heights was actually safe on block, so it's super annoying in the neutral and it's a great whiff punisher if they try and jump and you jump or something. In MKX, Sector can cancel the air charge into his teleport on block for a cost of a bar, for a really crusty mix-up of dash versus no dash. It also makes his overhead and low game into teleport way more annoying than usual. Flame Burner is an amazing armoured tool on meter burn, so it's an option that you always had to keep in mind when pressuring him. The only issue that had was that because it was down down 3, you would sometimes on wake up get a delayed wake up when you actually just want to wake up attack. It was quite annoying. Smart Missile in this game chipped out, and in my personal opinion, it had my favourite brutality in the entire game. Sector's unique buttons in this variation, like Back 2 for example, which was special cancelable, ranged and it can go into straight missile, made him a neutral god. His meterless damage was fantastic, and you could choose between full screen enders, close range enders into overhead low mix-up, staggered pressure into a straight missile that was safe at most ranges in the final patch. Sector in this game was just really, really safe and had a ton of options. Fundamentally, one of the best characters where if you were a talented player, you'd be hard pressed to find something this variation didn't do well. There is a reason that Sonic Fox was the greatest Sector player in Mortal Kombat X, right? The natural talent combined with a character that did everything they wanted to do. This wasn't always the case in previous patches. Armored reversals, for example, really hurt his most dangerous tools back then, but in the final patch where armor universally wasn't as damaging, his risks became much lower for the same great reward. This variation played just like Sector, with better mobility than ever. 
better mix-ups than ever, better buttons than ever. The variation was without question top 5 in Mortal Kombat X and saw plenty of success in the competitive realm, that's for sure. The honourable mention of this video is Sector in Mortal Kombat 11, who appears as an NPC. You can play him if you use PC mods offline, but he is missing all of the MK11 flair like crushing blows, fatal blows, stuff like that. Once again, I actually made an entire video covering him so you can check that out for an absolute deep dive. His moves are all taken from MKX Triborg, although some of them do function a little differently, and he's just definitely not a character that is designed to be used by a human, <laughs> because he isn't. His combo gravity and stuff really puts that forward. Personally, my all-time favourite visual design, and a character that I really would love to see playable in either MK11 or a future Mortal Kombat, but as the gameplay of Sector does appear in MK11 in some capacity, it was worth showing just for the cherry on top, I think. And that concludes what is definitely the longest competitive history I've ever worked on. Sector has been one of the iconic cyborgs since his first ever appearance in the 90s and remains to this day a special character to me. I genuinely probably wouldn't be where I am right now esports wise if I didn't nerd out over this character and franchise so much and it's been a lot of fun revisiting the legacy that Sector has left behind in the franchise. If you like this video and you want to see more of Sector, please check out History Behind the Warrior who did a full history of Sector's lore in the official franchise's timeline it launched a few days ago and I was lucky enough to be the voice of that video as well. Thank you for watching, if you want to support me make sure you stick around on the Patreon, maybe drop a like or a subscribe, I appreciate all of it and I will see you next time. Tell me who you want next, I'd love to know!